Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I had my birthday recently, um, just this past July 8th, and I asked over on Instagram if you guys wanted to see all of the spooky presents or just the books, and the consensus was that you wanted to see everything. So I'm going to go through everything that I got for my birthday, and of course there's going to be lots of spooky goodies, and I have quite a book haul as well, and it's all vintage books, and I just love every single one of them. So jumping right in here, the first couple of items I got were t-shirts. So I have one that I'm wearing, it says Halloween Safety with Michael Myers, and it has Jamie Lee Curtis here in all of her glory with a pumpkin, and it says um, sitter's guide on the bottom and I just love this shirt and the other one that I got from the same place so these are creepy company shirts they just recently had a sale and this one was one that I've wanted for a while so it says easy bake coven and it has an oven here an old-fashioned oven with all of these spooky little girls and it has some pies on here with pentacles and it's just wonderful i mean it's just right up my alley it's got a little graveyard and some some skulls and bones and a little cat and it's just everything it really is it's just absolutely everything so these t-shirts feel like they're really really great quality they're um, a nice soft touch cotton and it's um, the tagless version as well so really love both of these shirts I think they're just fantastic so I will definitely be ordering more from creepy company I'm gonna keep an eye out for some more sales because of course with shipping to Canada they can be quite pricey so but super excited to have these so I did get one more spooky t-shirt and it's from a new company called Creeps and Ghouls and Erin is actually a personal friend of mine. She runs her shop out of Ontario here in Canada and she's got some really really great designs that she's doing on her t-shirts and so I got one that says Horror Nerd and it's got some spider webs here and I definitely want to order some more t-shirts from her shop as well because the designs are just great so I'm going to leave a link down below for both Creepy Company and for Creeps and Ghouls so you guys can go check out their shops. And just because it was my birthday, Erin um, also included a letter banner in my package so she does these as well as well as some really cool wall decals also with bats and stuff on them so it's one of those like just little ribbon wall banners and it has these wonderful sparkly letters in them and the one that she did for me I'm just so appreciative of this she did the carpe tenebris which is my tagline on my intro to these videos and it just blew my mind it made me so happy so thank you so much Erin um, I'm going to save this letter banner to put up on the shelves when I decorate for Halloween which will probably be coming in um, August I usually am in full spooky season after August the 2nd which is Lunasa and the first harvest so after August the 2nd I'm gonna have some decorations on my shelves and I'm super super excited to put up my word banner with Carpe Tenebris on it and again I will leave all of Creeps and Ghouls information linked down below so you can go check her shop out so the last non-bookish item that I got were my earrings. So I got these really, really great spiderweb earrings from a small shop on Etsy called The Crypt of Curiosities. And it's run by a really great girl named Claire and she is based out of the UK. And these are just, they're so up my alley. I just love them. Hopefully that's focusing for you guys. So it's got this great spiderweb design and then a fairly large gem in the center. So these are statement earrings for sure and I just love them. They're just gorgeous. So I will have the Crypt of Curiosities linked down below as well. So I really wanted to support small business for my birthday and I ended up getting some really really great items. So I'm so excited to have my t-shirts, my new earrings, and now I will show you guys the books that I got. 
Okay, moving on to the books that I got for my birthday. Um, everything here is vintage and it's all in really, really great condition. So I'm so, so happy with it. I did get some books off of eBay from my family and I also placed an order for myself on another really great Etsy shop called Spooky Sellables. Marissa is a doll. She is so, so sweet. And if you're in Canada, I highly, highly suggest going to check out her shop. She's always like almost every day adding new stuff to her shop and it has some titles that I've never seen never heard of and she's just amazing so again I'll have that one linked down below so I have about 25 vintage books to share with you guys and because there's so many of them I'm not going to get into the synopsis of every single one I'm just going to talk about them briefly so the first ones that I got were a couple of anthologies so we've got short and shivery 45 chilling tales retold by Robert D. Sansusi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and even more short and shivery, 45 more spine-tingling tales. So these are super cute. I mean, you got the skeleton dude here with a little kitty on his knee, and then on the other one, um, you know, it has some cemetery gates, so it's just perfect artwork on the front of these. And these came out about 1998. So right there you have 90 short spooky stories. So I'm hoping it's gonna be kind of in the same vein as Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. You know, I was having a conversation with Nakia from Nakia's Hideaway the other day and she loves scary stories to tell in the dark just as much as I do. And it's funny because when I was growing up, I was considered the weird one or I was twisted or I was a grim reaper because I love that and I always retold the scary stories and the poems and all of that. I knew every single one of them by heart and um, nobody else had read it and she was saying that it's so weird that it was that way but I guess where I grew up it just never really caught on and but I love that there's so many people here in this community that love that series so I'm really hoping that this one is kind of reminiscent of the same sort of thing because that's like totally right up my alley so maybe I'll get to a couple of these short stories during spooky season and the other little anthology that I got is scary stories for sleepovers number nine so this one has a scary looking dude on the front and it's really super short it's only a few pages really and this one came out in 1998 as well so the same as the other um, anthologies so really really excited to have these couple I mean you can sit down and read this in an afternoon so this will be great for spooky season as well next up I got some Buffy books and of course, like I've said multiple times on this channel, I am the biggest Buffy the Vampire Slayer fan around. So really excited to have these novelizations. So the first one is The Harvest. So this of course is from season one and um, it's when the master kind of tries to break out of his cage or whatever is holding him back and invades Sunnydale. And just on the front here, it says school's out, evil's in. And then the other one, it's um, Halloween Rain. So I'm not positive because I haven't read the back, but um, I'm assuming this one has to do with the, f I think it's the first Halloween episode that they did where Ethan Rain comes into town and everybody turns into their costumes. So actually I'm kind of hoping it's that one because I will definitely read this one during Halloween. And it says he walks, he talks, he kills. And of course it has Buffy with Giles on the front. And I think Giles is probably one of my top characters in the whole Buffy sort of verse. Um, let me know down below if you're a Buffy fan, do you think Giles kind of rates right up there or kind of where you would rank him? But I'd say Giles is probably top three in my favorite characters. So next up we have a Nightmare Hall. So this one is Pretty Please. And this is the version with the step back cover art. So it has the die cut on the first cover and then you open it up and it has this scene on the inside. I actually had another copy of this book but it didn't have the die cut um, cover on it. It was just the regular, you know, it didn't even, I don't think it even had the, um, the embossed lettering so really really happy to have that one and from what I can tell this is about a girl who is extremely beautiful and she has an accident which scars her basically for life and someone thinks she's just plain ugly now and is 
basically out to kill her. So haven't read this one before. It's not ringing any bells. Um, like I've said before on the channel, I was a big Nightmare Hall fan when I was growing up, but I can't remember this one whatsoever. But I've said that about other books and I start reading them and I can remember. But either way, it's still super, super excited to have this one for the collection. So next up we have Christopher Pike Final Friends Book 2, The Dance. And this one was printed way back in 1988, and this cover just screams 80s with the girls in their poofy taffeta dresses, and you know, that you got a guy there with a mullet on the front. It's just, it's just fantastic. Like I said, it's from 1988. And this is one that I haven't read, and I most definitely have not read this one because Christopher Pike is my favorite author, and I ne just never ever got to these ones. So I'm still looking for book one in this series, so I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for that, and then I can get right into these ones. And the other Christopher Pike that I have is The Last Vampire 3, Red Dice. And this is another one that I had um, a different edition of, and it just had, it's just the plain cover. But this one is the step back cover, so it has all of the great um, die cutting in the first cover, and then you open it up and it has this great image on the inside. This book isn't in fantastic condition. It's actually, the E on Pike is actually taped together, but I was just really, really happy to have this because like I said, I had a different edition and I wasn't really a fan of the cover of that one. So really, really excited to have this one. And this one is from 1995 and this is the first printing. So really, really happy to have this. So next up for the collection, I got some Caroline B. Cooney. And when I was growing up, I loved her books. Um, the Face on the Milk Carton is one of my favorite books. And um, so I was really happy to snag these ones. So first up, we have Twins. And this is a book from 1994. And it looks like this is gonna be an evil twin sort of story. Um, these two girls think that they're kind of identical in every single way, but it turns out that they're very, very different. So I think we're getting into an evil twin story here. And then the next one is Hush Little Baby with this great silver lettering on the front and it's all embossed. So this one is a little bit later from 1999. And this is a story about um, a young girl who her mother just kind of thrusts a baby into her arm. She has no idea who this baby is, where her mother got it. So she has to try to figure out where her mother got this baby, why she kind of just handed it to her and disappeared. Um, but she kind of figures out along the way that people are actually after this child. So she has to figure out why these people are after it. So part of me wants this to be like kind of a demon baby kind of story, as twisted as that sounds, but um, glad to have it for the collection anyway. And the next one is The Stranger by Caroline B. Cooney. And just, you know, on camera, it doesn't do this cover justice because the kind of the tree and the branches on this cover are all embossed and it has this great sort of orangey brass shiny lettering. And it says on the front, he's not like other guys. And on the back, it says, till death do us part. So creepy stalker maybe, but I just love on these scholastic horrors and thrillers, um, the way that they do the lettering. I mean, you just don't get books like this anymore. And I've just so been enjoying collecting these older editions and you know, they're just right up my alley. There's something about new horror, a lot of the new horror, that just doesn't have the same kind of charm as these old sort of um, 90s, 80s and 90s horror. And of course they're getting more and more scarce to find. So excited to have that one. And then we also have night school. So the cover of this book kind of reminds me of um, the faculty and it has this great sort of drippy lettering and it says assignment terror. There are no graduates from this school ever. So creepy teenagers, haunted school maybe, looks good to me. And this one is, uh, this one is actually also a first printing from March of 1995. So next up we have a book by Jude Watson. This is called Premonitions. And I've never read anything from this author before. So this one's a little bit of a newer book. This is from 2004 and it's about a girl who has premonitions. So 
totally right up my alley. I love those kind of stories. And again, it does have the nice shiny lettering on the front of it. Not as old as most of the other ones in this collection, but still happy to have it. And next up is Summer of Fear by Lois Duncan. And this is a laurel leaf suspense. So it says on the back, um, the master of suspense, Lois Duncan. Why is Rachel the only one to sense the evil that surrounds Julia? So this one is fairly old. It's in great condition. It's from um, September of 1990. And of course, Lois Duncan is the same author as I Know What You Did Last Summer, which I'm actually reading this month. And I want to do a rewatch of the movie as well because it was one of my favorite movies in the 90s. And even though I've seen it 25 times, I definitely want to pick it up again because I haven't seen it in quite a few years. And again, it just has all of that 90s charm. So hopefully Lois Duncan does just as good a job on this one as she did on that one. And of course it wouldn't be a book haul for me without some R.L. Stein. So we have The Snowman and again you know on camera it just doesn't do it justice for this shiny red lettering and it's just beautiful. So it's got this decapitated snowman on the front cover and it says a cold-blooded killer. So this one is one that I've never read before and it's from February of 1991. I believe there's an alternate cover of this one as well, but this one is, is great. Um, I think the red embossed lettering that's all nice and shiny is probably my favorite. It really, really stands out. So next up, another R.L. Stein. This is Twisted. She's your sister, trust her. So evil sister story, and it's got some great sort of brassy orangey lettering on the front and this one is from 1987 and I have to say it looks like this book has never been read it's the the spine is still really really stiff there's no cracks in it and it's just in absolutely immaculate condition there's no creases or bends or anything in it so yeah, I think this is another twisted kind of sibling story. Um, that girl on the front looks pretty menacing, I have to say. And next up is Amnesia by Sinclair Smith. And this one has a sparkly silver, I guess you would call it, on the front here. And this is the first time that I've seen this kind of sparkly lettering. And it says on the front, what you don't remember can kill you. And it looks like this is a girl who's completely lost her memory. Obviously, it's called Amnesia. And this is a first printing from 1996. And this one is in great condition as well. Um, there's a lot of embossing on this cover. It's really, really nice. And it's an absolutely beautiful edition. It does have one sticker on the back, but I'm sure I can get that off no problem. And this one is a little bit removed from the rest of them. This is Kiss of Death, Dark Moon 1 haunting beauty, terrifying power. So hoping this is kind of a witchy sort of story. Never heard of it before. And it says in the back, what secrets does Rebecca hold as she walks through the woods alone at night? What mysterious power does she have that can't be explained? So really hoping for a great witchy story with this one. Like I said, I haven't heard of it. I've never heard of Elizabeth Moore. And this one is also first printing from 1995. So if you've read this one or you've heard of this series, let me know down below in the comments. So the last couple of books that I got here are some point horror. So we have The Fever by Diane Ho. And it says on the front, when you play with fever, you might get burned. So this kind of reminds me of, I don't know why it's popping into my head, maybe because I was just looking at those Buffy books, but the one where Buffy is in the hospital and she has a fever and she can see the monster because she has a fever and the monster is killing the kids in the hospital. So um, this sounds intriguing and this one is a first printing from 1992. And next up is The Invitation by Diane Ho. And it says on the front, RSVP or die an invitation to death and this one is um, from 1991 so this is another one I haven't read I really do enjoy Diane Ho's books but for some reason I never got into the point horror series as much when I was younger it was all Christopher Pike Fear Street and 
Goosebumps, of course, and um, Nightmare Hall. So I never read a whole lot of the Point Horror, so I'm really, really happy to get these. And these are in fantastic condition as well, um, considering how old they are. And of course, it has the wonderful embossed lettering on the front. And then we have the perfume. And I love the font on that. So this one is a Carolyn B. Cooney as well. So from what I can gather, this is about a girl who is, for some reason, she's drawn to buying this particular type of perfume. And it says, the sweet smell of evil on the front. And the next one we have is The Window by Carol Ellis. So I actually got a duplicate of this one in one of the eBay orders. But this one is in great condition and it says she's seen the killer and the killer has seen her. So it sounds like, yeah, eyewitness to murder it says on the back. So it sounds like this girl has seen um, a crime that she wasn't supposed to and the killer knows that she's seen the crime. So right up my alley and this one is from 1992. Next up, this is another one of my favorite um, covers of all of them. This is The Ripper. So it has these wonderful sort of Freddy Krueger type fingernails on here. And of course with the red lettering on it. And it says, don't look behind you. For them, the game was over. For him, it had just begun. And this one is a first printing from October of 1992 as well. So the next point horror that we have is Teacher's Pet. And I love the shiny silver lettering on that. And it says, look what the cat dragged in. School's out forever. And this one is from 1990, so great condition for that one. And the last one that I have is called 13. 13 Tales of Horror by 13 Masters of Horror. So we have um, Carolyn B. Cooney, Carol Ellis, Diane Ho, Christopher Pike, Sinclair Smith, R.L. Stein. So this one looks like it's going to be a great anthology um, and it's a point horror anthology and this one was included in my package from Spooky Sellables as a gift. So thank you so much Marissa for sending this one along. I'm really 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 stoked to have this one. So this is great because it looks like we have tons and tons of short stories that we can get through during spooky season. I actually want to do a reread also of um, scary stories to tell in the dark. I listen to the audiobook every Halloween and you can actually get the audiobook here on YouTube. Um, it's, and the stories are read by Alvin Schwartz who wrote the book. So if you just search it in YouTube, it'll come right up. So it's really, really great. And he does a great job reading them. So there you go. That's it for my super big birthday book haul. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you. Thank you to everybody who sent me gifts. And um, of course, again, I will leave all of the small shops linked down below for you guys to check out yourselves. But until next time, stay spooky, everybody. Bye.